Hello, fan addicts. Welcome back to my vault of all things EC. Today we're going to talk about the early days of EC fandom, not the very first generation, but the guys that came along in the late 50s after EC Comics had ceased publication. And um, there was a new wave of EC fanzines that started then. And these were first generation readers, but they were a bit young to have been in the first wave of EC fandom. Guys like Bob Stewart, Larry Stark, Ted White, that um, were active in the early to mid 50s while ECs were still being published. These guys were um, a, a group of friends that came up in the late 50s and started their own fanzines. And it was um, what I like to call the first wave of EC fandom revivalism. There was a um, collection published in 1980, and it was The Complete Foo. And Foo was a fanzine that the Crumb Brothers started in 1958. But um, they were part of a small group of friends that um, were publishing fanzines and became very active in EC fandom. And uh, on the envelope of that collection of The Complete Foo is the story of Foo, and it talks about how the Crumb Brothers discovered fanzines from a guy named Doug Brown, and that was their introduction into EC slash Kurtzman slash Mad fandom, and um, names like Fred Von Bernowitz are mentioned, and Marty Pals and Mike Britt. So let's talk about these guys. Doug Brown had the earliest of what I call that second wave of EC fanzines. And uh, this is Good Lord. It's from December of 1957, making it earlier than Foo or Fanfare or the original Squatrant and some of the fanzines that came after. They're very, very hard to find. I don't have examples of all of them, but uh, we can talk about them. So this is Good Lord. This is Doug Brown. And um, it was originally intended to be a mad fanzine, and then they quickly shifted their focus to Humbug because Harvey Kurtzman in the post-EC era was the guy to follow. The first thing in Good Lord is an in-memoriam to Ron Parker's Hoo-Ha. Now, Hoo-Ha was a very important fanzine of the first generation, longest-running EC fanzine of the 50s, and Ron Parker had made the decision to discontinue Hoo-Ha, and that's what this is about. And it's clear that Doug Brown kind of wanted to take over that mantle because Hoo-Ha was a very successful EC fanzine, and Ron Parker, as we all know, stayed active in EC fandom throughout the rest of his life. But this is in memoriam to Hoo-Ha, and it says... I hope it will never be my experience to read in memoriam columns on Good Lord. It's up to you. Well, Good Lord only lasted this one issue, but it did continue with a title change. There's not a lot of art here in this first issue, but as you can see, Harvey Kurtzman became the focus of a lot of these post-EC comics fanzines. And um, you're going to recognize a lot of names in here from the first wave of EC fandom as we go through letters pages. And this copy in particular was mailed to Lewis Neck. Lewis Neck is notorious in EC collecting circles because he had a massive collection of ECs, but he also stamped his name multiple times on the covers and interiors of his books. And um, so they're very easy to identify. I have at least one Lewis Neck copy of an EC comic, and he stamped his name all over it. This came with a form letter from Doug Brown about Good Lord, and it's also got a handwritten note to Lewis Neck asking for contributions. As I said, Good Lord lasted one issue, but it did continue, and it continued its numbering as spoof. I don't have the second issue, but here's the third issue, and Kurtz Maniacs will recognize this cover as being a parody of one of the Humbug covers that had Scrooge, I think it was Humbug number six, and Scrooge was saying Humbug, and this layout is exactly the same, but it's got Uncle Scrooge and Huey, Dewey, and Louie here, and it says Horse Feathers, but this is an issue of Spoof. And uh, this one has a bit more fan art in it. 
a lot of it very mad centric, humbug centric, and um, still a focus on Kurtzman. Larry Ivy involved with this one with some art here on the reviews page. I'm going to try to handle these carefully because they're they're old and delicate. And um, E. Nelson Bridwell also contributing. This is a review of Mad, but he was another of the big name fans. E. Nelson Bridwell, Larry Ivey, John Benson starting to get involved with these. This one's got an article on Bill Elder by Marty Pals. Now, Marty Pals was a good friend of the Crumb Brothers and of Mike Britt and uh, also Doug Brown. And um, he had his own fanzine as well that we're going to take a look at because I've got a copy of that. But um, the letters pages has letters from Fred Von Bernowitz, Ron Parker, uh, John Benson, Larry Stark from the first generation of EC fans. It's got a letter from Nick Meglin at Mad Magazine asking why there's no special fanzine for Mad. And uh, those are on the back letters page here. Larry Stark writing in with some historical corrections on things that he read in the fanzine. So his, his place as EC's number one fan was still pretty secure by this time late in the 50s. And this copy was Ron Parker's copy, the editor-publisher of the legendary Hoo-Ha. So these guys were all interconnected, very social, very active with each other. Here's what proved to be the last issue of Spoof, and its cover announces that Humbug is dead. So Kurtzman's latest venture, which was Humbug, was no more at this point. And uh, all through EC history, it's funny that people were wondering, what else are you guys going to write about? And there was never any shortage of things to write about. Here we've got a visit with Harvey Kurtzman by John Benson. John Benson's interviews with Harvey Kurtzman were expanded on over the decades, and um. There's a lot of cool information in here. E. Nelson Bridwell with It's a Mad World. Less of a focus on EC Comics at this time, obviously. Here's um, Fred Von Bernowitz with an article. So the big names of EC fandom from the early 50s, all active here. Um, letter from Dick Vole, who was... Also a legendary first-generation EC fan, advertising back issues. We've also got Mike Britt there. Mike Britt started a fanzine called Squatrant. It wasn't connected to the later Jerry Wiest Squatrant, but um, there were two issues in 1959 of Mike Britt's Squatrant. So back to Dick Vole, he was a genius. He would send letters out to the EC artists, and um, he would include sticky notes and just ask them, can you sign the sticky note and send it back to me? And he got everybody up to and including Graham Ingalls, a massive collection of autographs for Dick Vole. He also stayed active in EC fandom throughout his life. This is another copy that was Ron Parker's. So it's Ron Parker's subscription copy of spoof number four. I still need a spoof number two if anyone has one that they don't want and just want to send that on to me. The last one I want to look at is Fanfare. This was Marty Powell's. And this was the second issue from 1959. And this one has a really cool little article called The Den of Iniquity. And it might be hard to see it there, kind of faded. But um, The Den of Iniquity talks about Marty Powell's and Doug Brown meeting up to talk about fanzine publishing and talk about EC Comics, talk about Kurtzman and Mad. And this is the only little piece of art I've gotten one of my original fanzines from Robert Crumb. So that little guy up at the top with the Den of Iniquity logo is a Robert Crumb drawing. Going through fanfare, there's a lot of the familiar names. Marty Pals, um, Bob Stewart is involved with this one, first generation EC fan who also had the very first EC fanzine back in 1953 called the EC Fan Bulletin. And that was actually the inspiration for the official EC Fan Attic Club and their EC Fan Attic Bulletin. But he's got a story in here called Cat on a Hot Tin Can, very mad-like parody, very humbug-esque, and it's uh, got illustrations by E. Nelson Bridwell. So a lot more art at this time in the fanzines, and um, the, the beginnings really of uh, 
the the second generation of EC fandom. Letter in here from John Severin. He was also active with uh, these fans. He would insert their names into a lot of the artwork he did in Cracked Magazine and the Western comics he was doing in the later 50s. If you see the names of like Marty Powell's or Mike Britt in one of those, it's because they were very active in fandom and John Severin took an interest in that. Um, there's an ad here on the back page for other EC fanzines and um, of, of special interest is a little ad for Foo. And it says, Foo, still the best amateur mag. Very, very mad inspired. Only a Foo left, haha. -ha. 15 cents each, but why not get all three for 50 cents? And you can order them from the House of Crumb in Milford, Delaware. That is the Crumb Brothers. So Foo was the earliest art from Robert Crumb and um, kind of where he got his start. And if only you could get all three for 50 cents now. If you want all three now, it's going to cost you thousands of dollars. Uh, that's just a quick look. Feel free to ask me questions. I'm sure there's stuff I missed. And this video is running longer than I like to run, but I haven't shown those early 50s fanzines before. And um, good stuff. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you later.